widespread in in some locations, um, particularly developing countries. So obviously Moodle is um, a platform that requires an email address for a lot of its uh, functionality. And um, and this, this obviously poses a problem to delivering to delivering Moodle in these countries. So, so what we've done is um, we've had a look at the problem and 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 seen what we can do to eliminate that use of, of email address and particularly around the uh, registration process. So, just looking at some of the use cases we've um, we've we've, we've, looked at, we've looked at. So, obviously, there's the registration process. There's the login, um, and then there's things like the password reset, which is obviously something that also requires an email address and um, updating mobile number. So um, instead of updating an email address, you'd be updating a mobile number, which would also require um, some interaction. And you can see some of those cases are shared by multiple different roles in the system. Uh, so looking at the uh, registration process in a bit more detail, um, these are just some of the requirement documentation um, that we put together as part of the process to, to discover the, the functionality. Um, just going through, so it's very similar to actually the, uh, the core modal email registration process, um, but effectively you're swapping out the, um, the verification token uh, link that gets sent via an email with a one-time password. Now a one-time password, um, some of you may be familiar with, is essentially just a, a short code um, randomly generated um, by a system that's unique and it's only only available for a limited time. Um, it's only valid for a limited time. So once the user enters that code and it gets verified, um, they can then complete the registration process and they can be logged in all in a very, uh, very streamlined process. So what we've actually done to, to, uh, to, build, to build out this functionality is to develop two different plugins. Um, so an authentication plugin that is the one-time password um, module and a messaging output plugin. So the messaging output is essentially the underlying uh, functionality that delivers the SMS and that does it in conjunction with a third party system. So the third party system is essentially a messaging gateway service um, that's an internet-based uh, system that will essentially receive a, um, provides an API and you can use that to send out SMS um, and other um, text messaging um, protocols for delivery um, over a, a cell phone network in the, uh, the user's country. So the user will um, connect to Moodle using either a standard uh, web um, uh, interface or even, or even the mobile app. Um, they'll get through to the, the authentication process. They'll get their one-time password through the messaging gateway that'll be delivered to the, to the user via SMS when they can there complete their registration. Um, so just actually just back on that slide. So what, what the messaging gateway service we've actually used is a service called Rapid Pro, which is, um, which has actually been designed and actually came out of the, the UN um, innovation uh, fund uh, uh, quite a few years ago now. So it's quite a stable product and um, it's particularly designed for being used in developing countries. So just some of the other considerations that, um, that we've uh, factored in as, as part of this development is, um, is around accessibility. So making sure that, um, that we're using standard Moodle form components, um, standard you know, Google re recapture components, um, and even, even Going, going as far as looking at the fact that you can deliver some of these one-time password codes uh, using a voice service, um, which is one of the advantages of the, the Rapid Pro um, gateway. Um, so messaging and notifications is, um, is obviously the, one of the other core features of Moodle that, that relies heavily on email address uh, functionality. So essentially having the, um, the underlying implementation using the messaging output uh, framework allows um, those 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 features to be uh, fulfilled by the um, the SMS components. So things like um, you know assignments, submission notifications, and forum posts, and um, even the instant messaging can be delivered over SMS. So as I mentioned um, before, Rapid Pro is is one of the services that we're using as a gateway. Um, that in turn actually talks to other services. Um, that provide the, the SMS delivery in country. So it's, um, it can be a challenge to, to find uh, a 
um, services that do deliver in every country throughout the world. So, um, so it is it is a, a challenge, but um, th there often are um, services out there that that will deliver in country. Um, so I'm going to see a, a quick question there in the chat about costs associated, and and it certainly is, and that does vary from country to country. So you, you can find some countries. Um, do have a higher cost um, compared to um, others. Um, so the, uh, security and privacy concerns are another another issue. Um, obviously, SMS isn't isn't bulletproof, but you know nothing is. Email has its own issues. So um, there are there are ways of um, mitigating some of the concerns. Um, so um, obviously, the one time passwords only only available for a limited time. Um, uh, there, there is an option to have a, a two-factor authentication process put in place. So as well as the one-time password, you may need to answer another question, um, image verify, for example. Um, and um, yeah, so so in, in essence, the, um, the security concerns are also something that um, we, 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 we feel that given the, the limited sort of context in which this uh, functionality would be used. We're not sort of, you know, dealing with you know bank accounts or <laughs> anything like that. And it is is purely for primarily for the registration. Um, and then you can, you know, you can disable the other notifications after the fact. So, um, so the other potentially some of the other privacy concerns are the fact that the mobile phone number is is actually in the Moodle system. Um, you you don't really want that to be shown to other users. Um, so that's that's going to be hidden away um, and and not revealed. Um, so I guess what I was also looking to do is um, show you a quick demonstration of the the process. Um, so just quickly share my screen. Should have some time to do this, I hope. And hopefully it all works <laughs> without any issue. So just coming up there, I would. Uh, Hope that my um, screen is currently available. No, okay. It has started now. Okay. Try that again. <laughs> Uh, not sure why the screen sharing is not working. Um, oh, it looks like it's starting now. It's working now. It's working now. Okay, great. Thank you, Carlo. Okay, so um, I've just actually got my phone plugged in to the um, to the computer here. So just got a, a login page here for a for a Moodle site that we've got set up. Um, so standard Moodle login, and you have got the create new account option at the bottom. So instead of where you get your email. Um, email address and form to be to be completed here. You've got a, a mobile phone number. So I can quickly just put my phone number in and confirm that I'm not a robot. <laughs> and I can then continue. So I've now got a message saying I will have received a SMS code. So that should be on its way. So hopefully in a moment I should see an SMS code pop up in my phone. There we go. So six nine eight seven seven eight. eight. And I can then click next. And then it'll just ask me to fill out a few simple details um, about um, who I am. Let's try and make this very simple process to then land you into Moodle. So there I have, I've got an account and I'm I'm logged in. So I think one of the other use cases I did mention just previously was the forgotten username and password. So again, that's another feature that we've, we've built in, which essentially provides you with a method of resetting your password, which is, follows a very similar process where you'll just receive an SMS code. Coming up in just a moment. There we go. So the reset code is 5948871. And allows me to to reset my password, and 
I'm done, and then I could I could log in. Um, so just wrapping that up. Um, that screen sharing. So that that was essentially the the demo. Um, uh, I guess the next steps that we're looking to do is just to implement. Um, uh, other messaging outputs, so including WhatsApp, um, Facebook Messenger, they're some of the um, very popular uh, messaging um, uh, protocols that are used in developing countries. So that's that's a big priority for us. Um, and then just some better integration with the mobile app um, and, um, and, a, and a few other um, bits and pieces to, to build upon this SMS um, uh, functionality, including potentially some interactive um, activity plugins that would um, allow more functionality to be exposed um, through SMS from the Moodle application. And um, so that, that's basically it from me. So if there's any questions at all, um, be happy to ask any that I uh, answer any that I can. <laughs> Thank you very much, Luke. That was really interesting. I found it very, very interesting presentation. We have a uh, uh, questions. Uh, I copied those in the chat. Uh, the first one is from Martin. Can you read those? Um, yeah, yeah. So looking at the, um, the what sort of phones and, um, and apps are supported. Um, so at the moment, it's just, just plain old SMS, um, which uh, is pretty much available on any phone, including, including your dumb phones, your, um, your old GSM 2G. Um, but like I said, we're looking to develop additional functionality based on new newer messaging um, internet protocols such as WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger. Um, I think there's also already some some messaging outputs for things like Telegram um, and Slack. So you know all those all those different messaging protocols could potentially um, be used um, in a very similar way. So. So how can we implement this in an AWS hosted version of Moodle? So, I mean, the, the, the plugin that we've developed, the plugin code that we've developed is probably the, the number one um, component that you'd sort of need. Um, but on top of that, you know, AWS have their own um, SMS um, gateway as well. So um, the, the plugin code might need a bit of adapt, um, adapting to work with AWS, but um, like I said, we're using Rapid Pro, um, but I don't think it would take a whole, whole much um, great deal of effort to do that. So, um, and then the plugins developing going to be open source. So, um, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> um, at the moment we're still still a bit of a work in progress. Um, and um, you know, there's a good chance I think we will, but um, it's still something we're we're discussing. Um, um, at the moment, yeah, we're still we're still under um, development. So, yeah, once they're once they're ready, I think um, I think there's a good chance, but um, yeah, we'll have to have to work on that. Um, um, what if they change the number of the registration year? So that was another question. Um, that was one of the use cases and uh, certainly essentially is going to follow a similar process to what the Moodle um, email um, address change process works. So essentially they'll have to verify that they own the new number um, and once they do, then they can, they can flip to that. So obviously they've logged in, that they, they've verified themselves and then they can, they can change their phone number. Um, and once they confirm that they've, they do actually own that new phone number. They will. Um, they will. Um, they will complete that um, that change. Uh, the last minute question is coming from Fraser Jackson. Integrating with WhatsApp. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, that <laughs> Great question. Yep. So yeah, we are looking at doing WhatsApp. That's that is one of the the, the next um, <laughs> priority items that we're looking at uh, implementing. Um, there are a few technical issues around around WhatsApp. Um, a few a few um, contractual issues as well. Um, given the WhatsApp is, is owned by Facebook and they have a, a lot of terms and conditions to agree to, but um, yeah, certainly that is um, something that we're very interested in doing, given its popularity within developing and. Um, and, and mid-range country countries. Okay, thank you very much, Luke. Uh, thank you all for attending uh, this 
presentation and all the presentations we have presented in this afternoon. Uh, it was a very interesting day. Uh, we can finalize the day and uh, we wait for all of you tomorrow. <laughs>